Welcome to another video on the I Get Chem channel where we help you learn chemistry by showing you how to solve problems. Um, this problem is on the Le Chatelier's principle which has to do with how the equilibrium shifts when uh, changes are applied to the system. So let's read the problem and we will go to the solution. Uh, so the problem says for the following reaction UO2 solid plus 4HF gas going to UF4 gas plus 2H2O liquid, where the delta H for the reaction is plus 23.2 kilojoules per mole, how will the following changes affect the equilibrium? A, increasing the temperature. B, adding more HF. C, removing H2O. D, increasing the volume. E, adding UO2. And finally, F adding H2 gas. So here is the solution. Let me uh, write down the equation again. So the equation is uh, UO2 solid plus 4HF gas going to UF4 gas plus 2H2O liquid. And the problem also tells you that the delta H of this reaction is equal to plus 23.2 kilojoules. So this is written for one mole of the reaction, so I'll just leave out the per mole. Okay, so let's go over each part. The part A, what will happen when you increase the temperature? So uh, if you look at the delta H of this reaction, it has a positive sign. That means that the reaction is endothermic. So endothermic meaning that you have to supply energy to the reaction for it to go to the right. So what you can easily do is to think of this delta H, this amount of energy, as part of what is needed on the left side of the equation in order for the reaction to go to the right. So we will just put this energy, 23.2 kilojoules, on the left side. So every time the reaction happens for one mole of this, you will also need uh, 23.2 kilojoules of uh, energy. So, okay, so part A, because um, increasing the temperature is similar to making more energy available for the system. So it is as if you are increasing the amount of energy availability uh, for the reaction. Uh, because energy is on the left side of the reaction, then increasing the available energy is going to push the reaction to the right. So the correct answer is this will go to the right. Part B, uh, if we increase the amount of HF by adding more HF to the system, you see that HF is on the side of the reactant right there, and it is a gas. So as a result of that, adding more reactant is going to push the reaction to the right. So Le Chatelier's principle tells me that the reaction should go to the right. Uh, it's important to uh, recognize that in this case, HF is a gas, uh, and that makes a difference as we will see in the next part, which is um, H2O. So now if I remove H2O, you notice that H2O is on the product side, but H2O is actually a liquid. So uh, because a pure liquid or a pure solid has no concentration, they don't actually show up in the equilibrium expression. So what that means is that if you remove either a pure liquid or a pure solid, pure solid from an equilibrium, it would have no effect on the equilibrium position. So even though H2O is on the product side because it's a pure liquid state, uh, it's in the pure liquid state, it would have no effect on the equilibrium position. So the answer to C is there is no change.
d, uh, if we increase the volume, then the equilibrium will shift in such a way to try to digest away the extra volume. So uh, to explain that, let me see if I can draw a picture. So let's assume that you have a box. And then inside this box, you have a bunch of HF atoms. So I'm going to use yellow to represent HF. And then you also have a bunch of UF4 gas, which I'll represent by blue. So those are the UF4 molecules. So now these are the gases. So uh, they fill the volume of the, of the box. Now there is a solid, as you can see, in UO2. And there is also a liquid, as we have said, in H2O. Uh, solid and liquids do not fill the volume of the box. They would basically just sit at the bottom of the box because of gravity. So I'm not going to draw them because it is really the gases in this equilibrium that responds to the change in volume. So now let's imagine that you increase the volume of this box by suddenly expanding it. So now instead of, instead of this box, it's going to be inside a bigger box. So now let's say the box is that big. Now if the box is now bigger, then the gas that was in the original box, so let me just try to get rid of the red box. The, the gas that was in the red box originally now suddenly experiences a larger volume, so they're going to try to expand to fill the rest of the box. But at the same time, to try to fill the extra volume is much more effective for the equilibrium to shift in such a direction to increase the number of gases because that would take up a, uh, a bigger volume if you can produce more gas molecules. So you see that on the side of the left, you have four HF, but on the side of UF4, you only have one. So if the system is able to shift to the left, it would produce a larger number of gas molecules, and that would be more effective in filling, filling up the extra volume. So as a result of that, if you increase the volume of the system, the system will shift in such a direction to produce more gas molecules, and that is going in the direction of the left. So you see there is one gas molecules on the left side, on the right side, but there are actually four on the left side. E, if you increase UO2, the logic is the same as part C, where we increase, where we decrease H2O. You notice that UO2 is in the solid state. And as we have said, a pure solid or a pure liquid does not uh, show up in the equilibrium expression. So as a result of that, if you remove either pure liquid or pure solid from an, equ an equilibrium, it would have no effect on the equilibrium position of the system. So there should be no change. Finally, for part F. If you add H2 to the system, you also expect no change. The reason is because H2 is not in this equilibrium a at all. So there is no H2 is neither a reactant nor a product in the equilibrium. So H2 not being a part of this equilibrium, if you add it into the system, as long as you're maintaining the same volume, it would have no effect on the position of the equilibrium. Okay, so those are the answers for this problem. But before I leave this problem, let me say one more thing about 
the expression for the equilibrium constant in this case where it involves a heterogeneous equilibrium. Heterogeneous meaning that the reactants and products are in different physical states. So you see UO2 is in the solid state, HF is in the gas state, UF2 is in the gaseous state, but H2O is in the liquid state. So uh, I want to write down the equilibrium expression for this reaction. Um, you see UF2 is a gas, and so I can use the partial pressure of UF, uh, UF4, sorry, is a gas. So I can use the partial pressure of UF4 to represent um, its, uh, equilibrium, the equilibrium content of UF4 in the system. And because the stoichiometric coefficient is 1, this is raised to the power 1. So products on top and reactants in the bottom. So we have UF, uh, we have HF, which is a gas, so I can use the partial pressure of HF to represent that, and that is raised to the power 4, which is the stoichiometric coefficient. As we have said, H2O, being a pure liquid, does not have a concentration. UO2, being a solid, does not have a concentration, so they do not show up in the equilibrium expression. Okay, so the only two things that are in the expression for K are UF4 and HF. Or you can actually write this in terms of uh, what we call the K sub C, which is expressed in terms of concentrations. So you can use the UF4 concentration and the HF concentration. The form of the expression is the same. In one, we use partial pressure. In the other one, we use um, concentrations. So these are equally good ways of expressing the equilibrium constant. Uh, and there's a relationship between the numerical value of uh, K in terms of partial pressure versus K in terms of concentration. And uh, you can check out another video on our channel that talks about that. Okay, so that's the solution to this problem. Um, and if you have enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel and like this video.